Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to look at the cell cycle, which is what is commonly called cell division or mitosis, which is actually a type of asexual reproduction. It's basically where cells make clones of themselves. And as humans, this is how we replace cells that have died, or like when you get a cut, this is how your skin heals, or this is how we got bigger and our bones grew longer. When we talk about the cell cycle, remember that one of the characteristics of life is growth and development. And when you grow, you literally get larger. So you have to make new cells. And those cells need to be copies of each other. And so we do what's called mitosis, which is asexual reproduction, to make clones of our cells. But somehow these cells have to know, okay, when do I go through cell division? You know, when do I, as a cell, need to make copies of myself? So we need to talk first about what's called contact inhibition. With contact inhibition, just like the name contact means you're being touched, and inhibit means to stop. Well, if you think about all of the cells you have in your body, they are all completely surrounded. They are contacted on all sides. And so with contact inhibition, cell division is controlled by this contact. If you're one of these little cells, you're all nice and tightly wrapped, you've got all of your friends around you, you feel very protected, and you realize, okay, there's no room for any more people. So if the cell is completely surrounded, it is inhibited. So it knows it does not need to divide. But then something happens. Something comes in and cuts those cells, kills those cells, divides those cells, and now all of a sudden there's empty space. So contact is gone. So these cells right here realize, uh-oh, look at all that empty space. The cell here realizes, look at all that empty space. And it will begin to start this process called cell division in order to fill in that empty space. So when a cell realizes that there is empty space, Next to it, it will begin to copy itself in order to fill in that space. And then once that space is filled in again, those cells should stop dividing. Because once again, it's when it's completely contacted, it should stop dividing. Well, this is what cancer is. Cancer cells have lost contact inhibition. And it tends to be, this is an actual gene that we have in our DNA that tells our cells how to do this. Well, cancer is a mutation, or most types of cancers are a mutation of this gene. So once the cell starts to divide, it just keeps dividing and keeps dividing and keeps dividing. It doesn't know when to stop. Or it just might start dividing for the heck of it, but it just keeps dividing and keeps dividing. Well, not only do these cells just keep dividing, these cells are mutated in other ways. And these cells will start to pile on top of each other and steal nutrients from the cells that are working normally. And that's what happens when you have a tumor. Now, in the case of your cell cycle, why would cells need to divide in the first place? Well, first thing to keep in mind is what's called DNA overload. Remember, DNA is the cookbook of our cells. It's what tells our cells what to do. Well, sometimes a cell starts to get too big. Okay, It realizes that there's that empty space next to it, so it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we can have what I call DNA overload. Remember, DNA is the cookbook that we use to make proteins. And if my cell gets too big, I need even more proteins. So I need to make more and more and more and more proteins. And it just gets to the point where your cell's like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Okay, I cannot keep up. It's like, it's like during the holidays, you know, companies, sometimes you go to buy a present and they've run out because they can't keep up with demand. They're just overwhelmed. Well, that's what can happen with our cell. Sometimes our cell gets so large that we cannot make enough proteins. And remember, if that cell can't make proteins, that cell's gonna die. So if that cell gets too large, it has two options, either die because it's gonna run out of proteins or it needs to divide in order to get smaller. Second of all is diffusion. Cells get their nutrients through diffusion. So diffusion is only efficient over short distances. So think of it this way. 
if you were in a classroom and you were all sitting at a desk and I gave, I just had one little bag of M&Ms and I gave it to one person. I said, take how many M&Ms you want, but then pass it on. Well, by the time I got to person number six out of 30 people, that bag of M&Ms has probably already run out. So those other 24 people technically would starve to death. Well, the cell's too big, it can't get all the nutrients that it needs. And so therefore it's going to die. So another reason why a cell would need to divide. And also what's called surface area to volume ratio. Nothing in nature is perfectly round. Everything in nature actually has folds, just like a balloon. And you guys know you can start to blow that balloon up and those folds get smaller and smaller and smaller until there's no folds. Well, if there's no folds and you keep blowing into that balloon, what's gonna happen? Yep, it's going to pop. Well, the same thing is true with the cell. As the cell grows, volume increases faster than surface area, and we can actually cause that cell to pop. So if for some reason a cell is getting larger than it's supposed to be, that cell is either going to die or it's going to need to divide. As you can see here. So therefore, cells have to do what we call cell division, which is mitosis. And in the case of cell division, it really depends on what kind of cell you are. Now, if you remember, prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. This is an example of a bacteria. They have this one piece of DNA, and it tends to be in a circle, but you can see here that it's like taking a circle, uh, a string that you've tied in a circle, and you just kind of throw it all in there. Well, in the case of prokaryotic cell division, they do what's called binary fission. The term fission means to split, bi means into two. So in this case, the bacteria splits into two. So as you can see in this picture, here is our normal bacteria, okay, when we first get started. And here you can see it's doubled its DNA. It now has a purple piece of DNA and a red piece of DNA. And the cell would literally grow twice the size. And you can see how the cell splits in half. So we have two exact copies of that, of that bacteria. So this is asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is going to make clones. Okay. Now, in the case of binary fission, this is how bacteria reproduce. We cannot call this mitosis because by definition, mitosis has certain steps and it talks about having a nucleus. These guys don't have a nucleus, so we cannot call it mitosis. What eukaryotic cells do is what's called mitosis. But we need to talk a little bit about our DNA first. So that's why I have this picture here. You know that DNA is our genetic material. Well, DNA actually comes in different stages. And you know that DNA is kept inside of our nucleus and it's protected inside of our nucleus. Well, I've always called the nucleus a bank, but for the purpose of cell division, I want you to think of the nucleus as your junk drawer or your sock drawer. People's sock drawers tend to be a mess. And you just kind of shove your socks in there. You just kind of shove stuff into your junk drawer and it does its thing. Well, that's what DNA is most of the time. DNA is this tangled up mess that you can see here. It kind of looks like a bowl of spaghetti. 99% of the time, our DNA is this stuff called chroma chromatin. Okay. That's gonna be what we call workable DNA. In order for our cells to work, our DNA needs to be what's called chromatin. So 99.9999999% of the time, we have chromatin. However, we need to make new cells. So remember chromatin is made from DNA. So I need to make sure that I photocopy every single recipe I have because I need to make sure that each of my babies have the same cookbook that I have. So we have to do what's called DNA replication. We're gonna to have to photocopy every single recipe that that piece of DNA has. Well, that's hard to do if things aren't organized. So it would be like you taking your sock drawer and dumping it out on the bed and laying your socks out. Well, your cell will begin to unravel this mess. And this mess is what we call chromatins. During cell division, and this is the only time this happens, during cell division, our chromatin will untangle and form nice pieces. And 
I'm using different colors for a reason. Okay. It'll form nice pieces of DNA. This is what we call chromatids. Okay. So chromatin would be like all the socks shoved into your sock drawer. But then you take your sock drawer and you dump it out on your bed and you lay all your socks out. So you have just sock, 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 sock. Those represent what we call chromatids. Well, then you put your matching socks together. So you would put your two burgundy socks together. You would put your two dark blue socks together. You would put your two light blue socks together. Okay. Well, that's what we call chromosomes. Chromosomes are two matching chromatids, just like you have two matching socks. Okay. And I know when I put my socks together, I just kind of fold them. My grandfather used to take a rubber band and put the socks together, but something has to hold your chromatids together to form your chromosome. And that's a little protein right here. That's called the kinetochore. It's also called the centromere. Sorry, my handwriting's not the best on this. But Chromatin is what we call workable DNA. Your DNA is chromatin 99.9999999999% of the time. You will only have chromatids and chromosomes if your cell is about to go through cell division. Right. So in the case of eukaryotic cell division, again, eukaryotes mean we have a nucleus. We will take our DNA and we will arrange it into these things called chromosomes. The only time you have chromosomes is during cell division. Chromosomes are found in the nucleus, and they contain DNA and protein. Think of it as a spool of thread. For those of you who know what spool of threads look like, we have this piece of plastic or this piece of wood, and we wrap the string around it to make sure it doesn't get knotted. Well, that's what kind of happens in our cells. This DNA protein combination, if you hear me say it, is called a histone. It's kind of like a spool of thread. Now, in the case of humans, we have enough DNA to make 46 chromosomes. So that's 23 pairs of chromosomes. And this is what we mean when we say our diploid number. You guys know that the root word di means two. Well, if you think of a gene as a recipe, you've all seen recipes. Every recipe has two parts. You have the instructions and you have the ingredients. Well, you have to have both parts of that recipe to make the recipe. Like I can't just give you the list of ingredients, okay? I just can't say a cup of sugar, a cup of water, because you don't know how to mix them together and how long to bake them for. But I also can't give you the just the instructions, because we'll say mix the water and sugar together, but you don't know how much water and sugar. You have to have both parts of the recipe. So our diploid number means we have two parts of the recipe. We have what we need in order to make our own proteins. You're gonna see things like egg and sperm, are what we call haploid. They only have half the recipe. So that's why egg and sperm can't make proteins. They're born with all the proteins they're ever gonna have, and then when they run out, they die. They cannot make more. But as humans, we have enough DNA during cell division to create 46 chromosomes. This is what we call our diploid number. Our body cells, basically any cell that's not an egg or a sperm, when we talk about them being diploid, which means that they can create proteins because they have both parts of the recipe. And again, remember, cell division, the chromosomes are only seen during cell division. The rest of the time, they're this thin, uncoiled mass that we call chromatin. 